Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. Now, today, today we're going to chill. It's going to be a chilled episode. Uh, I'm going to try and not get as angry as I did in the uh, live com during the Late Orient game. And I hope you can understand my, my feels in that episode, because those injuries and just the way that game went was horrible, frankly. But... We picked things up since then, so hopefully today we can uh, carry on that kind of pattern. Now, actually, before we get into today's episode, I've been, like, overwhelmed with the number of people, new subs and new viewers and just people viewing the videos. It's been crazy. And so, firstly, thank you again to everyone for viewing, liking, comment, just whatever you've been doing, just thank you. Um, also, and those of you who have been commenting, it's been cool to talk to some of you guys and, I've, you know been talking to a few of you in the comments but i want to know more of you guys so you know not everyone comments on the video that's fair enough i don't always comment out on comment on people's videos when i watch them on youtube because sometimes i just want to enjoy the videos but i come to you today with a question and that question is firstly two, it's a two-part question firstly what was the first fm game that you played like your first taste of fm um be that when it was championship manager or like we're talking the 90s or is it relatively recent and secondly what is the thing that drew you to it over any other management style football game basically like i'll give you for example like i actually am a massive noob when it comes to fm could you tell could you tell well basically um i started playing fm after reading a book called football manager ruined my life basically uh, someone bought it for me for christmas with my kindle a couple of years ago and as a result i read it and thought that was it was a great book. It's by, I think, Ian McIntosh, who's a hilarious author slash writer slash... He's, he's a good guy. Um, and basically, it provoked me to buy the game. Uh, I got it on Steam really cheap in January or whatever. And yeah, but that was FM13. To give you an idea of how new I was now, I did play Football Manager games before that, but I used to play FIFA Manager. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Like, I genuinely did, and that's because I pretty much didn't know that Football Manager existed. I was a massive... I don't know but my point is that is how I got into it and there's something so special about it it's just the detail is what I love about it that is what for me love I love about it anyway and this way you can create this sort of almost like you're in charge of your own world it's it's very strange but that's what I love so what are you what was the first game you played a football manager and why do you like it let me know in the comments I'm very curious to see what you guys what stories you guys have about football manager for me anyway we're going to get into today's episode because it's been a very strange one. Plus, we have our live com against Crew Alexandra at the end of the month. Now, we would managed to get three straight wins. And I really wanted to push on this month and get going with some of that. Unfortunately, we did not get off to the most fabulous start. Um, we lost 4-2 at home to Rochdale. And I'm generally going to pin this on Gary Gardner. Because we took the lead in the 12th minute through Marcus, of course, who else? And frankly, we were pretty decent. Uh, Ian Henderson did equalise for Rochdale not long after that with their first real chance of the game. Unfortunately, in the 31st minute, I think, it, yeah, 31st minute, Gary Gardner gets sent off. I still don't understand why, but he has, of course, since got the three-match ban, like, kind of crap, which then meant that we had 10 men against Rochdale. So, and then Paul Gallagher, not long after that, put them in front. I thought, crest. Uh, crest. That is a new word. Well, it's not a new word, is it? But you know what I mean. I meant crap. And um, I decided to try and push for it since we were at home. And I've seen us do this before against teams last season. And we did actually get level through Miles' story. Two all. thought, brilliant. Unfortunately, uh, Devon Green immediately... Uh, yet another one of those ones where you don't actually get a chance to make the tactical change to sit back again before they've already put themselves back in front again. So I couldn't make any changes. And then Paul Gallagher, unfortunately, got another one. It was a little bit unfair on us. Um, it was like three all, I think, on click out chances. I was a little bit disappointed in that one, really. Um, it's Next up, we had Birmingham. Now, before I show you the score in the Birmingham game, um, oh, that's what I want to point out. These games I played earlier today, literally earlier this exact day, it is now Monday uh, when I'm recording this. But... An update has been released since I recorded, uh, sorry, since I played those games. I took some break, had some food, now I'm back to do the live comp for this game. But the update apparently fixes goalkeepers, which means you won't ever have to hear me say goalkeepers are broken again, I hope. And if I do keep saying it, then that's a different issue entirely. Now, unfortunately, goalkeepers weren't really the issue in the Birmingham game. 
Oh no, 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 no. Um, this was a really, really strange one. Like, they were definitely better than us. Were they 7-0 better than us? Fuck no. Not even close. Like, they had some decent chances, but s- they had, like, three clear-cut chances, I think. Tops. Uh, and they missed one of them, because it was a clean... Uh, it was, like, a really clean opportunity straight through on goal we actually had more possession in this game we didn't have many chances on goal ourselves but we had some good ones we had two clear cut chances it was 3-2 on clear cuts if I recall in the end and yeah we lost 7-0 um Peter Crouch put them in front early on and that was disappointing because I actually singled him out and tried to mark him out the game it didn't really work and I quickly turned that one off however in the second half something just went to shit and I do not know what happened I don't know what they were able to change because uh Karim Matmur basically on the hour mark, made it 2-0. And then, the floodgates just... Comp- well, except they didn't. It took a further nine minutes for them to get the third goal, and then it was four, five, six, seven. And they just kept scoring, and I couldn't... Every time it stopped, it just did it again. I don't know what happened or why, but the point is we lost 7-0 at Birmingham City, and that was a colossal... Um, that was, well, that was a clusterfuck of a game. And it just completely got away from us, and that's really ruined our goal difference a little bit. Thankfully... Um, we had an immediate response with our rearranged game against Oldham, uh, not Oldham, what we're talking about, against Yeovil, and we came up with a huge win, like genuinely massive, I'm, look at the stats for this game as well, um, also I should point out, definitely not a penalty, and <laughs> they had no shots when they got that penalty, this was 0-0, they had one shot after the penalty went in, um, so, yeah, Marcus put us in front in 11 minutes, Jed Wallace then made it 2-0, and Andy Bartram wrapped up the game before half-time with the third goal. In the second half, Wes Fogden, who I've been really starting to enjoy the uh, performances of, scored an absolute worldie, because that's just what he does now. I'm going to encourage him to shoot more, and I have actually got him set to shoot more often. Right, apologies about that, guys. Yeah, so Fogden was able to make it 4-0 with a worldie, and we've been getting him to shoot a lot more from long range, and he's got a good... I don't know, does he have... Does Rose Fogden have a good long shot on him? Long shots. No. Hmm. That is weird, because he's scored some crazy good strikes this season. I don't know what it is then. Um, But, yeah, he's done some great goals for us this year. And Miles Story was able to wrap up the route on 76 minutes. I kind of... I actually pushed to overload when we went 5-0 up, because... I wanted to see if we could win 7-0, purely because I wanted to try and recover from the result against Birmingham. Unfortunately, um, Yeovil got a penalty in the last minute, and I, that's out because I really wanted to see it. Well, firstly, to keep a clean sheet, and I wanted to keep a pitch a perfect game kind of thing, not let them have a single shot of any sort, and they hadn't. The, the penalty was the first shot on target, and the first shot, and then they had a second shot after the penalty went in. That was it, and oh. Proving that we can do it at this level, and Yeovil are a good side, so I was very, very pleased with that result. Next up, th- this game was crazy as well. Um, <laughs> there have been some ridiculous games, and unfortunately this one kind of bit us in the arse with injuries as well. Um, Ricky Holmes went off injured, as did uh, Marcus, after 11 minutes. So I'm pretty certain we're without him for today's game, which is going to be a massive blow. But basically, um, Paddy Madden put Scunthorpe in front, and... I wasn't too bothered about it. Like, I was content to just sit and see what we could do with the day. Um, unfortunately, Fogden... <sighs> Wait, where's the... Why is it only saying two goals? Ah, pff, what am I talking about? I was going to say, I don't... Yeah, Watma put us in front from the penalty spot. That's right. Uh, but then Paddy Madden was able to equalise. Now, just... Before halftime, Wes Fogden scored another cracker. And then after halftime, uh, Charles DeSales made it 3-1. And I thought at this point, brilliant. We're, we are sorted. Um, we're going to get an away win. Unfortunately, uh, well, Kenji Gora's goal was a joke. He basically ran all the way down the byline. Uh, sorry, down the touchline. Past like three players, despite no one ever touching, putting any kind of a tackle on him. Whipped the ball in. The ball went straight to our goalkeeper, who just parried it into his own net, basically. So, yeah, goalkeeping error. Um, and then Paddy Madden, immediately after that, was able to go through and score to make it 3 all, which really pissed me off. Thankfully, Jed Wallace scored a free kick in the 94th minute and rescued another win for us. So when you look at our recent form... Well, actually, we have one more game. What we're talking about, we had Colchester, and this, again, was... Oh, just blissful. 
We were better than Colchester. We deserved to win this game. And Colchester have been playing well this season. But again, took it to the 93rd minute. And Miles Storey was the man that stepped up with the big win for us. And that means that in two games, though, we, re- we basically got four points from those 90. 90- third fourth minute goals which is spectacularly good but as you can see with the uh, the little blip there we've actually won six of our last eight games and that does actually fill me with a bit more confidence the uh the, over, the colchester game was actually our game in hand in the end and as you can see we're up to 10th place now just five points off the playoffs so you never know what we're capable of we beat yeovil who are in the playoff spots 5-1 and we have won at birmingham this year i'm pretty no one at home to birmingham this year we may have lost away at birmingham by a lot of goals, but still, it's something to build on. Uh, Marcus is still the top goal scorer in the league, which is kind of cool as well. We're just going to take a little look at the squad while we're here. Uh, let's see, turn not at club. Goals. Marcus with 26 in 32, which is pretty damn good. Story now has 10 in 10 starts. He's made a lot of substitute appearances this season, and I don't think we'll be extending his loan spell with us next year, but he's, he's done well. I've got some ideas on who I might want to bring in, uh, mainly the likes of someone like Paddy Madden from Scunthorpe, potentially. Um, assists, well, that's Wallace with 14. It's been superb. Uh, man of the matches, that's Marcus with six. Although Alex Winter has two, and Wes Fogden also has two. Pass rating, well, that is mm, between Partington, Fogden, and Dunn, although we could probably do with boosting that a little bit. Although look at the amount of tackles the likes of Dunn and Partington have put in. They're doing a great job in there. As for yellow cards, Partington is also top of that list. Reds, well, Gardner now has one as well, which kind of sucks. Jed Wallace is actually our best average rating player now, having taken over from uh, Marcus just because of his superb performances. Though in the games that Brendan Maloney has played, he's actually done quite well. Unfortunately, he picked up a knock and is still out injured as a result of that. I think he's missing like five or six weeks, if I recall correctly. Let's just take a little look. Undergo twisted knee. Yeah, he, he was out for three. I think it was two to three weeks actually. But he will be missing for today's game, which we are going to get into now. Um, I thought we already set it up to the point where we could play the game. Usually, I get it to the uh, match preview screen before I uh, go and get into doing the live com stuff because otherwise we then have to sit through menus and that is the last thing you want to be watching right now is loading screens because now you can understand how slow my computer actually is right here we go right to the match preview screen that wasn't too bad actually so they're playing a four five uh yeah four five one uh what well, this is yes what's he like as a player is he quick oh we don't know much about him he's not that quick what's his he's quite a good finisher is he decent in the air jumping reach is pretty poor Heading's pretty poor. What is this guy's sort of... What is his jam? He's not particularly fast. Ah, I think we could push up a bit against them, in all honesty. I think we could push higher up. We're going to close down a little less, though. Um, and... Yeah, I think I'm going to just go with that for now. Um, do a quick quick, and then I can mess with it after that. Wallace is going to play in the centre today. Is that really wise? Is fogged in a little bit? Foggy behind the eyes. Where is he? Yeah, where's he, where's he, where's he? Where's Fogden? Huh. That just sounds like I said his name. Okay, I'm very... Co- Am I looking at him and not seeing him? Is he like in our under 21s or something? Or has he just like completely disappeared? Where the hell is where's Fogden? Uh, ability. Fogden, right. What? Unavailable. Why is he unavailable? Um, yeah, I don't want him in that squad. He needs to be in the senior squad. don't know why he was in this squad at all. Um, oh, point is, he can't play anyway, which is really, really frustrating. Um, so Wallace will play in the middle, I guess, then. Um, which gives Dissels a chance to start. Um, Barkhausen, who you won't see here. Oh, yeah, here he is. Tom Barkhausen. He's going to be leaving because, you know... He's a backup player, I think, or rotation player as his squad stays. Yet, he's been barking on at me all fucking year about not getting enough first team football and how oh I deserve to be starting well you're a fucking squad player why would I sign you otherwise that is something that I really do feel is still a glaring error which is this stupid squad status thing where they just want first team football all the time anyway yeah so now basically he's leaving the club because uh, I won't play him because Dissels is better than him as is, obviously, Jed Wallace. So, is that going to be... Is Ricky, no, Ricky Holmes is injured, so we can't... Raheem Hanley's done okay, actually. Although, I think I'm... Oh, no, Maloney's injured as well, isn't he? 
So it's Watmer and Webster at the back, basically. That's what we're going to have to go with. Let's get ourselves into the game and hope that we can pull off something a little bit more um, professional than we did in our last live com against Leighton Orient. And hopefully, the new uh, the changes they've made to the match engine, especially the goalkeeping errors, will hopefully not be a problem for us today. That is the I really pray that if we lose this game, it isn't due to stuff like that, basically. Um, that, that's my main hope. So, oh, they've gone with Lewis up front. Great work there, scouts. Uh, oh, he's got 14 pace. Acceleration ain't bad either. What's his finishing like? Could be anywhere. Denon Lewis. Oh, well done, scouts. Um, with that in mind... I'm going to just put it on always and hard. Um, I mean, we've got stuff anyway, but I just want to make sure that he in particular is singled out for some like, some uh, treatment here because I want to leave one on him. Leave one on him in the first minute and maybe he'll think twice about trying to get through you again, basically. Um, thankfully, Marcus is fit, so he will start. Have we got Miles Story on the bench? Yeah, we do. Uh, okay, so that is that, basically. Yep, yeah, right, let's get into the game and hope that we can do something here. We are at home, so I'd like to think we can take the game to crew a little bit. You know, we've beaten teams that are up there in the league before. I've messed with a lot of the stats. I've, one thing I've turned off is the passing into space, because I found that was us giving the ball away way too much. And I think turning that off has really helped. He's going to score here. He's definitely going to score here. Oh, hits the post. Um, crew get, certainly getting off to a good start there. But we didn't concede. And we've had a couple of shots then. And again, we're controlling the possession now. We've managed to find a way to control possession in games again now. I don't know what we were doing before. I think it was the passing into space instruction that was really messing with us. Uh, one, two, a goal or two. Well, yeah, cheers. What a wonderful instruction. Get a goal or two. Because huh. what we were trying to do before then was something completely different, right? Let's, uh, we're doing well. Just... Um, Get creative, yeah. I don't normally do this in the first half, but I feel like this game is probably ours for the taking. We've got a lot of possession of the ball. We are getting better at the game just in general than ever. This has been an absolutely shocking game. Um, so far, there's been no highlights whatsoever. So, yeah, great choice for the live comp there, Matt. Well done. Um, Gary Gardner is looking absolutely knackered. And I don't normally do half-time substitutions, but... <sighs> I tell you what, I think we may need to bring on James Dunn. As good as Gardner is, he looks knackered. Or is it because he's picked up a knock? No, I, I can't take that risk. Because he's, he's injury prone as it is. Um, we're going to bring him off. And go with James Dunn in the second half. See if we can come up with something. Just a 1-0. I'd take a 1-0 here. It would keep our little run going. And give us a hope of that playoff spot. Which is what we're really, really aiming for now. Um... <sighs> they're obviously going to try and come at us at some point in this game, you'd think. Wallace gets the ball out wide, loses it immediately. Go on, win the ball back, get in on them. Oh, I can see this breaking down into a goal. That's a great pass. And it's... Oh, what a tackle. What a tackle. Was that what more? God, he's becoming a real player. Him and Webster are becoming a really good young uh, centre-back partnership. And Danny Holland's with the great clearance there. We have got away with one. That's the first clear-cut chance of the game, and we've managed to escape without conceding. Um... Right, so we're going to wait till sort of 65 minutes. Make a... Oh, hang on, wait. Holland's with the long throw. That's going to go to no one. What more? Cleared out to Jed Wallace. Get it back out to Holland's. Holland's back to Wallace. Go on, long-range effort. Wallace to let one rip, but that is a poor effort, in fact. And now we could end up getting caught on the counter-attack. Or maybe not. Done. Oh, we are going to get caught on the counter-attack. Come on, clear your lines, Hoskins. And that's going to be a goal. And Oh, he's missed it again. That's two clear-cut chances. Crew are having a few chances here. We're going to have to make some changes now. Um, they've changed something. And look... 3-5. Um, so, yeah, the big scores are still prevalent. What can we change right now? Craig Westcar's on the bench. He's also off because, again, he won't accept his squad stayers. Uh, Miles Story. Do I bring on Story? Like, as great as Marcus has been, today has not really been his day. So I'm actually going to bring him off. Bold, perhaps, yes. But I think we need to make some changes. So let's just go here. And we're closing down more. I swear I turned that off. Um... We're getting a few shots, but maybe we could do with a couple more. Maybe just maybe whip some crosses in as well. Wait. Why can't I work the ball into the box? Shoot on side. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, in which case, yeah, we probably will go with whipped crosses. I'm not sure what crew are like for height. Um, so I think maybe some whipped crosses might be useful for us. Because we do need to come up with something in this game here. We were doing okay, but now crew seem to have 
established a foothold in it, and I'm determined to not let them nick this from us here. Winter into Wallace, Dissels, Hollands, and back to Watmore. Get it out to the left. There we go. Hanley. Maybe if you can nick it around the corner. No, they're coming in field again. Considering we're set to play wide and exploit the flanks, they don't half like cutting inside. Hollands, Dissels. Maybe a little bit of quick play. Story. No, not quite. Oh, please don't let them go. Oh, come on. Don't let them score directly from their own goalkeeper's clearance. That's just poor play. Jones, Waters, and that... Good God, they've got two players wide. Right, Rowe, and... Oh, what a save again by Paul Jones. And we've got away with quite a few chances tonight. Crew should be out of sight against us, and we are clinging on by the skin of our teeth, and Hollands will get it clear, and hopefully Jed Wallace can get it properly clear this time. And, oh, he's actually got it up to Miles Story, but Story has lost out. Ball over the top again, and Hanley needs to get that ball upfield, and he has, but again... Uh, our passes is just a little bit off kilter today. They're not really finding their targets as often as I'd like them to, and I don't think this highlight is over yet. I think that Crew are going to score on this highlight. I think we're going to lose this game 1-0 with a cheeky one coming up very, very soon. Long ball up, but again, this time down to Danny Hollands and lost the ball again. Just keep it. Just There we go. Right, win the ball. Oh, come on. Oh, and that's 1-0 to fucking Crew. Why is it when they're really, really close to the ball, the attacker can somehow get cover like three times the distance and just nick the ball off them without them sticking a leg in? It really does annoy me. Let's see if we can see it in the highlight down in the bottom corner here. It looked like he was about to win the ball. and All of a sudden, their attacker just had the ball. Um, let's see if we can find out exactly what happens. Here. I meant to overload in a sec. Right, look, he's right there, and all of a sudden, he isn't. Uh, Rowe whips it in. It's a good header at the back post, and there's not really much our goalkeeper could do about that. Right, um, we've got 15 minutes to go. I have one substitution left. Where can we strengthen this team? Is it really worth bringing on West Carter playing the centre? He can play in that role. I know he's not exactly pleased with me at the moment, but if we can get him on there, go overload and push forward. Um, oh, wait, no, no, no. Go to overload. And then tell them to push forward. Uh, I mean, got to be fair to crew. They've created the better chances in this game. But I thought we could have had our chances in the first half. In the second half, they changed something at half time, And maybe I shouldn't have brought off uh, Gary Gardner. But it's one of those things, really, isn't it? Hopefully, we can not get caught out here. Or just create something in this last few minutes of the game. Just show, show some kind of backbone. But I don't think we're going to. No. Oh, that was really bloody disappointing, actually. Crew... Put in a pretty damn professional performance against us, but with the way we've been playing lately, I figured we could take them. Uh, oh, I certainly wasn't impressed with your solid defending. We let them have too many chances and didn't create anything of our own. Like, literally nothing was created by us in this entire game, which was really, really disappointing. And, well, Walsall lost, so, you know, we could have... Oh, that's the thing, we could have got even closer we'd have won this game, we could have been right in there, we could have been two points off the playoff spots, and that is another bitter pill to swallow, and so we'll go back, um, obviously we're going to have a busy march, uh, we also have the youth intake coming up soon, so uh, that's going to be uh, pretty busy as well, you'd probably have to think, let's see what we got next month, March, oh it's quite busy, actually it's quite busy, Jesus, March is going to be a busy ass month, um, we've got Preston, Barnsley, Walsall, Crawley, Bristol City, Gillingham and Donny. So Preston, away, that's going to be tough. Barnsley at home, that's going to be tough. But we are at home, so you never know. Then we're at home to crew, so... Walsall away, that's going to be tough. Crawley at home, that's going to be tough. Bristol City away, maybe slightly easier. Gillingham at home, winnable. Donny away, winnable. But those games there... That four-game stretch, we need to take some points from those games. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves exactly where we were before. Anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed this episode, please feel free to drop a like on the video. And if you liked it even more than that, please feel free to hit that big old subscribe button. And we shall keep this... I almost said keep this yoga train going. What the fuck am I talking about? Anyway, guys, I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.